Hey guys, welcome to A Film Darkly. I'm your host, Anthony Pisano. And I wanted to give my quick review of Knives Out. I uh, just got the chance to watch it. Um, hadn't watched, you know, didn't get to watch it when it first came out. But uh, I decided to go ahead and check it out. Um, it's written and directed by Ryan Johnson, which uh, I think the last flick he did was <laughs> The Last Jedi, the highly controversial Last Jedi. And of course... There's people who feel he single-handedly destroyed Star Wars. Um, of course, the same thing was said about George a number of years ago. But um, this is kind of the another generation of fans that are coming up that are, um, you know, bothered by it. But anyhow, uh, I wanna, didn't want to really talk about Star Wars. But uh, I just wanted to talk about this movie because this movie I thought was fantastic. Um it's just an amazing film to me. Uh, I, I think the acting is just really, really good. The story, the plot, um, just the the directing uh, from Ryan Johnson. Um, I I'm just I I was so over the moon getting out of this movie. Um, I don't even know, you know, what else to say about it. I could see why it has the ninety five percent on um, or ninety seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I thought Daniel Craig was <laughs> was great in it. Um, I thought Chris Evans was Chris Evans was Chris Evans. He was solid. Um, Anna de Armas, uh, who played the main character Martha, next to um, Daniel Craig, uh, I thought she was she was uh, really lovely and just um, you know amazing actress. Did a great job in her role. Um, this movie is just really stacked. You know, Jamie Lee Curtis, Tony Collette. Uh, Michael Shannon, um, just a lot of great actors um, in this film. And there's even others that I'm not naming. I think uh, Frank Oz was in it as well, uh, the voice of Yoda. Um, and, you know, this movie just, it kind of does a, a, a murder mystery in a different way. It's almost predictable in one sense, while in another, it's not predictable at all. I found that it was um, really interesting the way the story flowed um, and how it decided to to twist a thousand which ways. Um, it, it, to, to me, it just it, it was so inventive the way Ryan Johnson uh, wrote this film. I, I just thought the dialogue was fitting. I thought um, the um, foreshadowing, you know, they did foreshadowing. But, of course, you know, any great script will have good foreshadowing. And this has, like, superb foreshadowing where it's like you just can see how everything, you know, flows together and how there's certain things where it's like you didn't even remember hearing that. And then it happens. and You're like, oh, yeah, you know, I remember back when they said this. Um, I just thought it was a very inventive film. You know, it, it was it was interesting because it was kind of like I felt at one point like what is this movie really about? Because I feel like we solved everything in the first half. And then all of a sudden it like, it keeps going and you, you, you kind of don't see where it's going completely. Um, but it's one of the most interesting plot lines and I'm trying to like dance around it cause I don't want to spoil anything. But, um, I, I just loved the way the characters played off of each other. I love that the family was so divided on politics. You had one side of the family that was like very alt right or or well accused of being alt right and uh right leaning and and obviously tra talking about Trump without saying Trump. And then you had the other side of the family that was clearly liberal and left leaning and you know just saying all the you know calling everyone um Basically, on the other side of the family, Nazis. You know, they were Nazis because they believe this way. In a way, it was kind of stylishly making fun of the tribalistic politics that we see on Twitter and social, you know, social media in general, Facebook and whatnot. You know, where you just have people from the left call the others Nazis and then people on the right call them snowflakes. And, you know, you kind of have people that are on one side and people that are on the other. And, um, you know, I admit I have a side and... I, you know, I, I don't tend to fall for certain things. Um, I think people would be surprised what I actually believe. But um, but anyways, there there's a lot of people who believe a variety of things. And as human beings, we should, you know, 
be believing in a variety of things. We, we shouldn't be stuck on any one thing. Um, and I thought that was, it was, I thought it was interesting how the film did that, how the film managed to kind of, you know, they, they had these, these clear political discussions, Ryan Johnson clearly trying to say something about the tribalism that we see in the United States today, but also kind of like formulating it within this family, this family that, that clearly all have their knives out, so to speak, and, you know, no pun intended, but also intended. <laughs> but anyways, they all have their knives out and they're ready to go at each other's throats. And that's kind of the whole idea here. Uh, while you have the character, you know, Daniel Craig, who kind of always is, is expecting and knows something's going on. Um, and I, I loved how his character worked. Um, and I loved how, um, you know, just th this main actress, I, I don't, I, it, I just said her name, um, you know, I think she's Hispanic. She might not be Hispanic. She might be more uh, South, Southern, uh, South American um, region because in the movie they call her Ecuadorian at one point. Then they call her a pet, per, they say she's from Paraguay. And then another part, she's Brazilian. And it's like, those are three different things. But these people are like labeling her basically. They're just saying she's from South America. And there's just this interesting little aspect that they try and throw in there. Um, you know, some people might say, well, Ryan Johnson is also trying to get political about immigration and stuff. But it's more like he has this open discussion and he doesn't really allow it to, you know, express an opinion, even if he might actually have one. You know, he may actually be a left-leaning person. But I like that he was able to write this very neutrally where you had somebody from both sides while all the meanwhile, you had this confliction going on um, with the death of their father, you know. And if you didn't know that was the storyline, well, you know, I, or you feel like I spoiled something, I didn't because it's in the trailer. Anyways, <laughs> you know, the whole, the whole, the the plot of the movie is basically there's this party. Uh, the it's it's uh, the father, uh, Harlan, um, and I can't remember their last names like Thera, uh, Thur. Thorup or something weird like that and they they basically all think of themselves as like they're the super rich family and basically the father uh it's the night of his birthday and he dies and it seems like a suicide but they can't figure out why he committed suicide or um you know what happened and there seems to be more afoot um than just this suicide and that's the whole point is you know, they're invest you know, Daniel Craig's character is sort of this private investigator that get gets pulled into the situation to um, you know, investigate everything, but he's not an actual like police officer. So but but he's highly respected. So they 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 you know, they, they accept his opinion and they allow him to kinda of like ride along um because he's so good. And he is good. Like it's interesting because it's kinda of like there's a there's so many twists in this movie where there's so many characters that surprise you. He surprises you, and uh, the, the main character Martha she surprises you, and uh, Chris Evans' character surprises you. And I really liked that all these various characters just sort of they surprise you, and um, I just thought it was really inventive. I enjoyed the ending. I enjoyed I enjoyed really every minute of this film. It's one of those movies where. I could probably sit down and watch it a thousand times over because I enjoy every minute of it. It's just such a great film. I feel like, you know, I immediately when I walked out, I said, this is a masterpiece. I feel Ryan Johnson is going to get a nomination for screenplay, possibly best director. Um, the movie could be up for best picture as well. I think it depends on the amount of categories. Um, I've not seen Irishman and some, some of the other movies that are, already being talked about for Oscars, but I do think Knives Out is a film that should be considered. Um, you know, I, I definitely feel Ryan Johnson should get directing and screenplay n nominations off this, and I feel Knives Out itself should get a, a Best Picture nomination. I think it's that good. Um, I, I think the supporting cast will be considered. I don't think anyone will win. Um, I don't think any one performance is good enough to win, but I do think most of the performances are good enough for nominations. Um, so I, I could see like Jamie Lee Curtis being nominated, Michael Shannon being nominated, um, just because they're that good in the film. They really are. 
Um, I, I even think the young lady who played Martha, I think she could be nominated. Of poss- well, maybe not. Because if it comes to the back at Best Actress category, you, you start getting into, like, you know, the creme de la creme, like the absolute best. And I don't think she pulled off a performance where I walked away saying she was better than everybody. is. She, she wasn't. But I would say that the supporting cast... Given that it's supporting, uh, uh, best supporting, I think it, it's deserving of um, the, a lot of the roles in this uh, film. You know, they're, they're deserving. Tony Collette was great in this movie, but what movie isn't she great in? You know, she she's sold out for her roles that she plays, and that's one of the things I love about her is she just she just sells out. You know, she she knows, she plays like this interesting like hippie lady in this movie who's total sjw like left leaning you know the the stereotypical and 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 it's just and she's so funny and she's you know just this interesting character her expressions the way she acts and you know tony collette's just amazing uh, amazing actress and you know i could see her getting a nod um you know but i wouldn't be surprised if no one gets nominated for acting uh, even Daniel Craig, I think you could consider him for Best Supporting Actor. But I wouldn't be surprised if none of them get nominated, only because like they're kind of on the edge. It, it depends on what else is out there. They're on. They're definitely on the edge, though, where you could consider nominations for them. I think definitely the film itself, though, deserves a nomination. I, 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 just, I have no question about that. And I have no question that, in my mind screenplay and directing i think ryan johnson should be considered for both um i I think it's interesting that the guy who star wars fans hated because they say he's a bad writer and he's a bad director actually turned out a film that nobody is denying they're all saying this movie is fantastic and i i think that's an amazing thing you know I, i i honestly think this guy's way better than people give him credit for and I think even with The Last Jedi, like, it's like I said before uh, on my last podcast, most people who argue about it argue continuity issues, issues with, with you know, being a passionate Star Wars fan. If you were to kind of throw all that away, though, and just look at it as a story, it's a very good story. And what he did with that film um, was amazing. And I think it reflects in a movie like Knives Out, which is just as amazing if not it really it's better in many ways but i i just you know maybe i'm just a big ryan johnson fan maybe that you know maybe that's it i don't know um i i just i feel like this movie's great though and i, I think it's a fun movie um I, it's hilarious it's um intense it manages to build tensity so well it manages to just i mean it's just so well written so well written um yeah, so anyways, I can't say enough good things about Knives Out. For me, Knives Out has got to be like a 9 out of 10. It's it's right there, close to a 10, close to being perfection. Um, it, I would say if the acting was all kicked up a notch, it would be perfect a, a perfect film for me. Um, but I think the acting is probably the only thing that holds it back a notch because there was no performance in it that I felt like, Oh, this is, like, stupendously great. I just felt like they were all good. But I didn't think, like, you know, it was, like, anything that, like, write home about. Um, Interestingly enough, I heard that they're fighting for Endgame to get nominated. It's like, good luck with that. Endgame is so full of plot holes. That movie's not the best movie of the year at all. You know, it's an entertaining film for fans, sure. But there's a lot of movies that are a hell of a lot better than that, you know. Uh, you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, Midsummer. Um, I mean, it Knives Out. Now, um, you know, there, there's, uh, you know, I've heard good things about Irishman. I've also heard bad things. So, very, very intriguing. But I, I think in the end, this this movie's just so awesome, and uh, I, I just really enjoyed it quite a bit. And by the way, by the way, there's a movie coming out called Bombshell that is clearly liberal propaganda an idiotic film um i just can't believe it's even being made Uh, there's no story to tell it's it's such a stupid stupid concept of a movie and and just like the conversations i mean it's just dumb 
literally taking a story about Megan, the story of Megan Kelly and the president, and it's like really, it's like that was nothing. It was like a a blip, and you are making a movie out of it, making it out like it's just so stupid. It's a liberal propaganda at its finest. It's like, come on, man. Like, get over it. Let's make movies that are good, not movies based on blips. It's so stupid. Um, you know, all these great actresses in it, too. That's a, This just sucks even more. You know, Nicole Kidman's in it, and, uh, oh, man, there was some other good actresses. I know Nicole Kidman. Man, I am, like, totally blanking. Anyways, I'm just, it doesn't matter. It's called Bombshell. It's coming out soon. Don't go see it. It's just, it's just a propaganda. The the way it, it treats Fox News in the trailer. Look, I don't care what your opinion is of Fox News. Have your opinion. You know, is it right-leaning? Of course it's right-leaning. Have your opinion. But don't just make stuff up. The, you know, the trailer is just like making crap up. It's like, it's like creating the wish fulfillment of every liberal out there. That they think Fox News, you know, journalists just... You know, sit in a circle and like the main guy who owns Fox News is just like, how can we get black people on the news and call them all murderers? It's like, come on, nobody's doing that. You know, you, you're living in your own world if you think that's happening. And then literally I'm saying this. If you listen to this podcast and you're a person who thinks Fox News is like the worst thing in the world, I challenge you. I challenge you to challenge me. Because in no way, shape, or form is that the case. You know, they haven't done anything any worse than what MSNBC has done or what CNN has done. And believe me, in the end, those news stations have been caught for a lot more crap than Fox News has ever been caught for. Even if you think maybe the news they're delivering isn't the best news ever, they haven't been caught staging stuff. They haven't been caught using false facts, false statistics, you know, writing terrible titles. They haven't been caught doing things to that extent. You know, it's just, come on, man. Let, let's stop playing these types of games. This stupid tribalism at its finest, just trying to manifest it into something. It's so ridiculously dumb. You know, I have my sides. Don't get me wrong. I have my sides. I don't, I honestly don't listen to any major news network. But I just don't think that that's fair. I would say the exact same thing if you decided to make this movie about MSNBC and you were like, you know, in the trailer, you're like, oh, you know, let's just do this to the rich white guys and stuff like that. It's like, I would be like, oh, come on. I doubt they're having those types of conversations. You know, are they left leaning? Of course they're left leaning. You know, have they done stupid stuff? Yeah. But do I think you could make an entire movie about how maybe they, they, they were, you know, they were shown setting up a, a, a scene for for a, for a journalist, you know, like that one time when they got busted, where the, the journalist was like standing in like waist deep water, and they, you know, and, or act or the one journalist is acting like the wind's blowing him away, and in the background you see two guys just sort of strolling on by, and you're kind of like, wait, wait a minute here, um, that's a little staged. Um, can you make a whole movie based on that? That's what this is. That's what making this a whole movie on Megan Kelly is. This is so stupid. Anyways, enough about that. Knives Out's great. Go see it, please. Anyways, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff uh, to help me out. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.